The NASCAR Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same-game parlays to live in-game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today. Bet $100. Get $100 at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W I N N. BET state restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the college basketball experience. March madness is heating up and you need to subscribe to the college basketball experience. It's awesome, baby driver. Start your Wrap in and pull those belts up tight as the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presents the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. I'll wreck my mom to win a championship. I'll wreck your mom to win a championship. With all the news and the best bets for your NASCAR weekend. It refrains me from not beating the out of you right now because you ask me stupid questions. But since I'm on probation, I suppose that that's uh, improper to say as well. If you could talk about racing things, we could talk about racing things. Now, here are your hosts, Rod Gomez and Cody Z. Coming to you on a Tuesday or Wednesday or third. I don't know when you listen to podcasts. I don't know your habits, but I do know you listen to us. And for that, we are eternally grateful. It is the NASCAR Gambling Podcast here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. He's Cody Zeeb. I'm Rod Villa Gomez. Finally, there are some truck odds to talk about, Cody. Sometimes, sometimes I get very nervous that we may never have anything to talk about on Tuesdays. Yes, it always seems like it's cutting it close and we're refreshing and refreshing, but they finally got them out for us. Here they are. I'm glad the trucks are back this week. Uh, obviously, we had them the week of Daytona, but they were off last week. No, they did not race at Auto Club. Too bad because that would be a hell of a good race, I think. But I think we're in for a good one this week at Vegas, so uh, I'm excited. Me too. Me too. Again, it's all three. All three series are in action in NASCAR. Like you said, you got trucks. We got Xfinity. We got Cup Series. Um, Cody and I were still going to sanction some sort of go kart race. I just don't know if it's going to be in Vegas or not. But at some point, we'll have go karts uh, on that track or on a track before a race. But yes. This and this show is the truck series show where we will give you our picks. We didn't have one last week. Daytona was the first one. So uh, we were grateful. Of course, we didn't do one last season this early. We were just sort of lumping them all together. But uh, again, if you're brand new to this show, uh, we didn't always have all three series broken down for you uh, in separate shows. It used to just be all in one show. But now you get all the bets from all three series in each individual episode, which is exciting in and of its own self. I think at this point last season, we might not have even been giving out truck series bets, period. So uh, no, no, we've no. come a long ways, Rod. <laughs> we've come a long ways. And it's all thanks to you out there who are listening and, of course, watching us on YouTube. If you have yet to go to the YouTube channel, make sure you check it out. Search for NASCAR Gambling Podcast on YouTube. You will see Cody's beautiful face. And some guy sitting next to him. That's, uh, yeah. I think that's me. Sometimes I have to look. You had the beautiful part wrong, but that's okay, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, we also did have uh, somebody comment on the fact that my my background is too pristine for uh, for YouTube. So I'm going to have to fix that while yours is, uh, it's exactly what it should be. I, I love just it. crazy cluttered uh, sports memorabilia. I got some some beer stuff back here. I got all kinds of stuff. Indeed. Uh, but again, he lives up to his, his title, uh, beer man. So, uh, or beer guy, Got my, uh, rusty Wallace quarter panel back here from his last season in the Miller light car, so that beautiful. is pretty sweet looking, but, uh, it is yeah. sweet. definitely get over to YouTube. Check that out. Indeed. Uh, all right. So this week, this, this weekend is the Victoria's voice foundation 200 from the Las Vegas motor speedway in you guessed it, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, it is 134 laps around this mile and a half paved track. The tracks, Cody, they keep on getting smaller. Uh, 200 mile course for this one for the trucks. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, we're we've always in for like different styles of racing to start off the season. They always love to hit us with the variety right away. Yeah, they they've definitely changed it up. Now this is going to be somewhat similar to what we saw last week when we get to Xfinity and Cup Series, but obviously completely different from Daytona. Uh, this this will be absolutely nothing like Daytona. <laughs> indeed, it will not. Uh, drink if you. Every time I say indeed, I don't know what. Why is that my favorite word today? I have no clue. But if you want to be drunk by the five minute mark, uh, <laughs> go ahead and start drinking when I say indeed. Uh, last season's race here was on March fourth. It was a two hour and nine minute endeavor where the average speed was ninety three point two two three miles an hour. Yes, a far cry. From Daytona. The pole speed, though, was 178. There were 10 cautions for 52 laps. The margin of victory between Chandler Smith and Kyle Busch was 0.289 seconds. 21 lead changes, 1,623 green flag passes. That equates to about 20 per green flag lap. Wow, that was an ordeal, <laughs> that race. Yeah, absolutely. I did want to say too. So Victoria's Voice sponsors this uh, this race. Uh, we don't generally get too deep into the sponsors, but uh, this is a good good cause. Uh, back in 2015, on June 6th, uh, Victoria Siegel died of an overdose, um, and so her parents have started this foundation in her name. Uh, on that day alone, June 6th of 2015, Victoria was one of 129 Americans that died of a drug overdose. On that day, uh, by 2017, 200 Americans died every day from drug overdose. Um, her parents missed the signs, they say, and so they would like to educate people on what to watch for, what to look out for, um, and just spread the word about that. So very good uh, good sponsor this week. On uh, I know sometimes we like to have fun with some of the very long names, but this one is actually a very good cause. And uh, it's awesome that they, they use the truck race to to get their foundation out there and let her uh, memory and legacy live on and hopefully helping other people avoid uh, that same fate. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the sponsors for these races are self-explanatory. Of course, this one, uh, definitely a, a worthy cause and something that, uh, you know, raising awareness for what's a really big problem in this country at this point. So uh, happy to see that happen. Happy to see the truck drivers uh, able to, to carry that banner as well. Speaking of truck drivers, there are some non-regular cup driver or a cup, no, they're non-regular truck drivers in this series. They're cup drivers in this series, not the least of which we talked about it earlier. Kyle Bush will be suiting back up for the truck series to try to avenge his loss last season to Chandler Smith. And uh, last he two will- years in a row, he's lost to his own trucks. I know. Well, hey, listen. That's that's what you get, right? You yep. you field yourself a damn good team, and you're just gonna get hoisted by I'm your own. Gonna beat you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that might not be the case anymore. I think, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll have to talk about that. Uh, Ross Chastain is another one. Uh, obviously, Matt DiBenedetto is already. John Hunter Nemechek will be in this race, uh, and then of course Kyle Busch as well. So some some folks to look out for as we get ready for this race. Uh, Cody, any last thoughts on the race itself before we start getting into some of these bets? I don't think so. I'm ready to go, Rod. Cody's ready to get to bets. Very I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go today. I don't, let's get into the bets. I was about Make some to money. Say. I'm feeling good. I love, oh, I love betting on the truck series. Friday night, nice way to start the weekend. You jump into it. Again, we talked about it. Trucks let us down in Daytona because of the weather. We'll give them a pass there. But generally, trucks are the best racing on the weekend. Love watching the trucks beat and bang. Short race, it's balls to the wall from the drop of the green flag. So I'm I'm excited for some truck racing in Las Vegas. Mile and a half, baby. Mile and a half. 134 laps of sheer madness. So we'll get to the bets, man. Like I said, it's very – Cody's ready to go. Well, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. We'll come Let's back after it. the break, start setting up some bets from this race. But before we do, let's tell you about win bet. It's the official online sports book of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. WinBet is active in a bunch of states. There's tons of ways to win, including live betting and same game parlays, which you know better as WinBets build your own bet. March Madness is almost here. There's plenty of ways to win. Getting down on the NBA, NHL, XFL even. Sign up today. You're going to get a special offer. Bet $100, get 
$100. Limited to state availability. And of course, for our DGENs only, if you hit the biggest long shot parlay of the week, you're going to get $1,000 free credit. So much to choose from and all you got to do. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet so they know that we sent you. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-I-N-N-B-E-T. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present. Let's get replay through winbet is available. If you or somebody who has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. The SGPN merch store continues to add new items to the store every single day, up to and including brand new NASCAR gambling podcast merchandise. Go over to the store. Right now, it's store.sportsgamblingpodcast.com to get your favorite hats, shirts, sweaties, sweats, hoodies, all that stuff. Get it all. All your NASCAR gambling podcast needs can be fulfilled at store.sportsgamblingpodcast.com. If you find those sweaties, let me know. I'm looking for them. Cody, it's betting time, my friend. Trucks are taking the track, and we need to start giving out some bets. Hopefully, we can rebound from uh, uh, a bad Xfinity experience. I'm, I'm, that's the last taste in my mouth, and I want to get it out. Yeah, yeah, Xfinity not great for us last week. We did have some very good success in the truck series at Daytona. Again, Daytona is just the luck of the shit show. Fell our way that time, but I'm excited for this one. Uh, I'm going to start it off. John Hunter Nemechek, uh, a guy that we love to hate sometimes, but... I like him a lot this weekend, a lot, a lot. Uh, and I'm going to take him over Ty Majeski as much as that pains me because Majeski is a guy we've won a lot of money on. Uh, he's minus 125 in this head, head, oof, in this head to head, rather. Uh, last season in this race, John Hunter Nemechek led 23 laps, uh, ended up having a problem. I don't remember exactly what happened at the end of uh, the race there, but he ended up with the last car on the lead lap in 25th um after battling up front all day long he's good at this track the year before 2021 he out dueled kyle bush and beat kyle bush at his home track in his own truck um and one thing i really like about john hunter this weekend is and i think when we get into kyle bush we're going to talk about how it's a different team it's still kbm but with not being with toyota it's different john hernia check we saw it in the last couple of years in the truck series. He was really, really good during the regular season, had results every week. He was a competitor. It was when he got to the playoffs, he kind of disappeared, didn't make the final fours and stuff. Um, we already saw it last week, right? This is a very similar track, a little bit shorter. Um, California Auto Club is two miles. This is a mile and a half, but it is still an intermediate, worn out surface. Vegas, not quite as worn out as Auto Club was, but it's still getting there. Uh, so we'll have a lot of the same characteristics. Um, and he won the Xfinity Series race there. So obviously he's done it recently. He's won here before, had success here before. Uh, nothing against Ty Majeski. He finished 10th here last season. Nothing super impressive. Um, obviously, towards the end of the season, things did turn around. But I just feel like John Hunter is going to be one of the best trucks in the field uh, in that Tricon racing Toyota. Um, and, and I think that... He's going to be a guy we're going to see all night long. Uh, so I'm going to take him over time at Jeske. I wanted very badly to find an edge uh, to take, not take John Hunter and check, but then I just kept reading and reading the stats and I was like, damn it. I can't find a way to yep. fade him. And in fact, we'll get to something <laughs> later on where I was like, well, damn it. I talked myself into something crazy here. Uh, so I, I can't argue with you on the John Hunter and check. And, and what's crazy is that Majeski, I mean, Look, we've talked about him so much over the last few uh, rate or the last few well races, I guess, because we've only done this for a season. But, you know, again, he did finish 10th here last time. And going back through his his data at uh, at Vegas, it is not even all that great. I mean, he's only raced two races here and he had that one top 10 uh, before that was a 13th place. So, yeah, I mean, John Hunter over him. I think this week we may have to do it. He's hot now. Right. He's, he's feeling it. And I think he's going to be something to, to, to reckon with. So, yep. yeah. And even if Majeski has a good day, which I think he very well can and probably will, I just think that John Hunter is going to be one of the best trucks in the field uh, and at the very, very front. And I don't quite see that out of Majeski just yet. Yeah, me either. Uh, although somebody that I do see at the very, very front is my man, 
Mr. Scott Friesen. I'm taking Scott. him. Let me, Scott. <laughs> ah, okay, listen, spoiler alert, everybody. It is late over here. Stuart Friesen. <laughs> it's late, ladies and gentlemen. So if I mix up names and give you misinformation, my bad. Stuart Friesen, my favorite Canadian that I love to call Scott now, uh, is going to be my guy for a top five finish on this track. Uh, look, Stuart Friesen is a baller on this track. And I'm telling you right now that last season he finished in third place here uh, behind some very good trucks, right? Kyle Busch, Chandler Smith. Uh, so the, the race he finished third in, he had some very good trucks in front of him. Uh, but he's riding a stretch now of five top 10 finishes in a row uh, in, in the truck series here. So uh, 2022, he finished third. 2021, he finished sixth. Two fourth place finishes in 2021 and 2020, and a ninth place finish in the spring race because they did run two here at one point in early 2020. So Friesen's always hanging around that top five over the last few seasons. I still think he can get it done. Um, again, he's somebody that we love to cheer on. He's plus 250 for a top five finish. And listen, if you look at these top five odds, you're going to find out that that is actually pretty good value for a driver to finish inside the top five because a majority of them uh, are coming in under 200 so or even uh, under 150 at some points. So, again, I like the value on freezing for a top five car. Books are kind of fading them in that respect. So I'm jumping all over that value. Yeah, I have no argument here. Love Stuart Friesen. He's got the track history. We talk about him all the time, right? It seems like a guy we bring up every week when we bring up the truck series. He's very solid, very consistent, always can put himself in position. Uh, and that's what you're going to need for somebody that's that you're looking to get a top five on. So I fully endorse this one as well. Next up for me, uh, I think we might be going different directions on this next one. But I like Corey Heim over Grant Enfinger. Uh, Corey Heim, we talked about it last I think maybe in the off season, I think when we were talking about it, ended up winning the rookie of the year, only starting about two thirds of the races in the truck series, had an outstanding season, uh, won two races in that limited schedule. He ran uh, some of the similar tracks down the stretch here. He finished fifth place at Miami, seventh at Kansas, seventh at Texas. You go back and look at Grand Grand Finger, and I'm sure you're going to talk about some of his statistics here in a minute. Had some very good finishes a mile and a half. Not going to take that away from him at all. Uh, did struggle a little bit. He struggled here last season, finished in 23rd, uh, 14th at Miami, 11th at Texas. Those were the the few that jumped out as on the worst end of things for him. Um, but Corey Heim is a very, very good driver, up and comer. Again, he's in those Toyota trucks. Uh, Going to be racing for Tricon. Uh, I've got a lot. I'm heavy invested on Tricon trucks this week, as you'll continue to see as we go through the list here. Uh, that's a very solid program. Um, and again, we don't, we've not seen, all we've seen these trucks is Daytona. It's hard to measure much of anything with Daytona. So we'll see. But Tricon has been solid in the past when they were with Ford as, as uh, David Gilliland racing. Now they've obviously switched over to Toyota and, and Tricon uh, as their new name. But I expect them to continue to be strong on these types of tracks. Heim has been very good on these tracks before. I don't believe that he was in this race last season. No, he was not. No, he was not. But uh, the Toyota KBM Toyotas finished 1-2 last season. KBM Toyotas finished 1-2 the season before. They were strong here. That's basically what this Tricon team is now. They're the new KBM Toyotas in a sense. So uh, I'm going to stick with that, and I believe Corey Heim will have a great day. That's not to say, again, Enfinger could have a solid day as well, as you're about to make a point for. But I think that Corey Heim is going to have the better day. So I'm going to take him in the matchup at minus 135. And I am going to say exactly the opposite of you, in which I think Grant Enfinger is going to have a better day than Corey Heim is. I'm picking him to be the winner of Group E. Who's in Group E, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. It is Corey Heim. It is Ty Majeski, And it is Ben Rhodes. Those names probably make you go, uh, but why would I take Grant Enfinger? Well, Grant Enfinger's... Uh, at plus 260, he's the second longest odds of this group. And for Grant Enfinger, he's just got a knack of being able to get around this track. He has won here before. 
He won in 2018, but in 12 starts, he has seven top 10 finishes, which means he's been running around the front all day. He had a sixth place finish in 2020, a seventh place finish in 2021, and then another seventh place finish in 2021. Last season, not the greatest of uh, of races for him. He did finish 23rd after an 11th place start. Um, but of course, you did make the point that uh, these these KBM trucks were fast, but we don't know now. I mean, obviously, this is a, be- a much different track than Daytona, so we don't know if if this new Tricon uh, Sports whatever truck Toyota is going to be as good as KBM was. So I think that Enfinger, in his familiarity with this track, is going to come up on on top of this because, like you said, Heim has never been on this track before as a, as a truck driver. So we don't know what he's capable of in this truck on this track. And as for Ty Majeski, I laid it out earlier. He had a 13th place finish and a 10th place finish. All all he has to do, all Enfinger has to do, is finish in front of uh, any of these guys, and we're good to go. And for Ben Rhodes, I mean, obviously we've laid out Ben Rhodes's stellar career in the Truck Series uh, before, but for some reason, Ben Rhodes is not necessarily the greatest uh, on this track. And I, I wanted to take Ben Rhodes. I was like, man, I, I want to take Ben Rhodes, but you know, again, he's he's had some ups and downs, right? He has had seven top 10 finishes and 11 starts, which I just made the case for Enfinger. That's great. But he's also had finishes of 23rd, 31st, 25th. So when he gets in trouble on this track, he gets in trouble on this track like he did last season. He started fourth, finished 31st after a crash. So, um, you know, Ben Rhodes, for as much as he's got a storied career and, and a great, I guess, average on this track, I just feel like he's prone to get in more trouble than is Grant Enfinger, who's been able to keep himself clean. And uh, I like him to win this whole group at plus 260. Yeah, I already argued against Majeski. Uh, Rhodes, honestly, he's 18 to 1. I wanted to pick him as my long shot to win. Then I started to dig into it, and I'm like, I don't even think I could talk myself into this at 18 to 1, which seems like a crazy number on a guy like that. I think the fact that he is 18 to 1 says something. Uh, so I agree with you there. I think there can be an argument made as well. Guys like Zane Smith, guys like Grant Enfinger, they're with the same team, they're with the same manufacturer. That could be a huge bump for these guys at a track at a normal quote unquote track this weekend. Whereas the other guys that are Thor Sport guys in Rhodes, Majeski, they're yes, still with Thor Sport like they were last season, but they have different crew chiefs this year. They are different manufacturers. They switch from Toyota to Ford. Things are going to be different. Um, and, and so there are some big changes in there that could hurt guys. And that argument could go against Haim as well. He's Still in Toyota like he was last season, but it's a different team. The team he's on now was Ford last season. A lot of shaking and changing in the truck series over the last year. Um, and so I don't I don't think it's a bad argument. And I think for the number you're getting it at, it's solid value there. So I think you could do that, and you could still hit the Heim over end finger as well because uh, Heim's not in that group anyways. So you could, could double dip there if, it, if the cards fall right. Yeah, quite possibly. Next up for me. You got it right. Another Tricon garage driver, uh, Tanner Gray. I told you I'm going to be all over these Gray brothers. Taylor not racing just yet as he's not 18, but I'm going to be all over these Gray brothers all season. Tanner made us some good money at Daytona. I think he was top Ford, maybe at 10 to one. Also finished in the top five or top three at like plus 450, something like that, uh, and gave us a good payday. Going to try and hit that again. This is a little bit of a loaded field, so a top five is is a bit of a stretch, maybe. But at plus six fifty, it's worth it to me value wise to go ahead and take that bet. Uh, you look back here last season; he did finish in fifth, so there you go. He's already done it here before. Um, you look at he finished sixth place at Charlotte as well. Other than that, he doesn't have a lot of great results from last season. He was with the the DGR team in the Ford. Uh, it's the same team now, but at Toyota, again, I think their backing is better. I think that he's in a better truck now than he was last season, even though it's on the same team, different situation. So I'm going to give him a break there, but I'm big on both of these gray brothers, a little bigger on his brother, Taylor. I can't wait to bet on him in two weeks when he comes, when he's old enough to be in the truck series on these bigger tracks. Um, but I like Tanner gray this week for a top five uh, and a plus six fifty. I feel like, it's really good value there. 
again, a loaded loaded group at the top, right? You got Kyle Busch, you got Ross Chastain, you got John Hunter Nemechek. Zane Smith every week is going to be up in that group. But I think Tanner Gray could find himself in the top 10 near the end of the race. And if he can do that, then maybe he can put himself into the top five. At plus 650, I will take that. I mean, you really talk about a loaded field. It really is a loaded field. I mean, I with with those at least with those three there that are in there now, it, it just feels like those truck guys may have a little bit of a, a issue pumping through. But like we talked about, and we'll talk about when we talk about the winners, it's not always necessarily the case. So um, there is room for those guys, those truck regulars, to actually sneak and, in. And we've seen, uh, we just saw it last week at, at uh, an Xfinity race, right? Cole Custer, the best car out there, the favorite, should have probably won the race. Ended up with a flat tire, ended up having a problem. We saw guys in the Cup Series race get caught up in the pile up on I-5. It can happen, right? And so even though Kyle Busch is in this race, which he hasn't won in the last two seasons when he was in it, even though Ross Chastain's in this race, even though Zane Smith is great every week, where Zane Smith finished in this race last year? Dead last, I'm pretty sure. So it, even though these guys are in here, that doesn't guarantee them those top finishes, obviously, or you would just bet on that every week and it'd be easy, but it's not, it's not easy like that. So that's what opens up the door for a guy like Tanner Gray avoids the chaos. Some of these other guys have trouble and, and you know, at plus six fifty, that's kind of what you're hoping for at that point. Indeed. I mean, again, it's, you know, all the sprinkle we talk about, we don't talk about unit management as far as we don't tell you how to, how to manage your units, but obviously putting something on a plus six fifty, you don't need to throw a lot down in order to get something back for it. So uh, you're just hoping and praying for some fun to happen and uh, for you to hit that bet. All right, speaking of fun to happen, I didn't mean to pile on roads. I honestly did not mean to. When my research started to lean me that way, I was like, well, okay, I think I'm going to take this bet. And that's Christian Eckes over Ben Rhodes. And again, we just talked about how Ben Rhodes, it's not as if he's terrible on this track. You know, we can't. when you finish in the top 10, 63% of the time, and your average finish is just outside of the top 10 at 11th place, you're not doing all that bad. But I will say that the lot of the bad days make me very leery of, of choosing him in this. Given that Christian Eckes has four uh, top 10 finishes and six starts, two top fives, and he does have a win. He won in 2021 after starting 15th. Last season got caught up in a wreck around lap 126, so he wasn't able to finish the race, but... He does have a third place finish after taking the pole in 2019. Um, he does have an eighth place and a ninth place finish to go along. He has two finishes outside of the top 20, uh, top 20. But again, I, I'm not necessarily scared by that um, because again, that crash was not necessarily his fault anyways. So I'm going to give him the benefit of it out there and think that he's going to finish higher than Ben Rhodes. And that's at minus 135, so the books agree with me on this as well. Oh, I'm sorry, minus 120. Books still agree with me, though, uh, juicing it up in favor of Eckes over Rhodes. Um, but like I said, I wanted, to, I, wanted to, I wanted to take Rhodes. I was like, I, but it's Ben Rhodes. But my research sort of made, said, no, no, sir, you're not taking Rhodes in this one. So I have to go with the juice. But, Cody, you only pay the juice if you lose, and I don't think we're going to lose this one. Bingo. Only pay the juice if you lose. I like this one as well. Again, we talked about roads. I, I try. I tried. Right, the number was there. I liked it. I tried to talk myself into it. I couldn't, uh, and that even got me off really having a long shot this week. So, if that tells you something, as much as I like my long shots, that's that's where I'm at on roads this week. Love the guy. Gonna bet on him plenty this season, but not this week. Next up for me, I found a group matchup. This is Group B. Um, this is an interesting group, I guess you could say. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. But I'm going to take Raja Karuth to win this group. He's at 5-1 to one odds. Haley Deegan is at the top of this group at plus 260. I think she's probably clearly the best driver in this group, uh, in the best equipment in this group for sure. Uh, so if you want to double dip and take both these guys, I have no problem with that. But I'm just going to hope that Raja beats Deegan. You got Dean Thompson. Not that doesn't do much for me. Brett Holmes again doesn't do much for me. Jake Garcia and and Daniel Die. I I don't know. This is a weird group. These are the other people in this group. But with Raja here at, at five to one, these are all very inexperienced people, other than Haley, really. Um, and Daniel dies in a GMS truck, as is as is Raja. 
That's one of the reasons I liked Raja in this. He's in a GMS truck. Those are solid trucks. It's good equipment. Um, doesn't have a ton of experience in the top cup series. Uh, he only started, I think, in four truck series events last season. The only somewhat comparable track he started on in the trucks last season was Worldwide Technology Speedway in St. Louis. That's a 1.25 mile track. So a little bit shorter, but still intermediate area range. He finished 11th place there in that truck race. Uh, all his other starts were like Richmond, Bristol, Phoenix. Shorter tracks, so hard to compare those. He did race in the Xfinity Series race last week at Auto Club. Again, another somewhat similar of co comparison track. Finished 21st. That's not super great, but that's not horrible at all. And in this type of group, that might be all you need to win this type of group anyways. Uh, so basically, as much of a just shit show as randomness as this group is, I'm going to take Raja Karuth. He's very much up and coming driver. There's a lot invested in him, right? NASCAR, he's big on the NASCAR diversity scale through their diver drive for diversity program. He, he was in the parade with Richard Petty. They've got him everywhere. They want to see him succeed. And there's been a lot of resources put behind him. Chevy heavily invested in him. That's why he's on this GMS team. Um, and so I think he's got very good resources at his disposal. I also think he's a pretty good driver. Again, we're limited on his Cup Series start, or not Cup Series, he hasn't started in the Cup Series yet, but on his Premier Series, Xfinity and, and Truck Series starts. But we've seen a few decent results so far. Uh, so just going to kind of throw the dart out there, but I think this is the, the most educated dart at 5-1. to one. Um, I like these odds for Raja Karuth. Yeah, that's a very interesting group. You are absolutely right. That that seems like the uh, the yeah. It just it's a weird grouping. It it's really very is. weird. It is. I was trying to I was trying to find the right analogy to make, but not, nothing sounded nice. So I just I'm yeah. gonna play the thumper <laughs> role. I don't have anything nice to say. I'm it was almost like they just gathered all the other you know that group of like others in the race, and they're like the, here, let's put you guys in a group. Boom. Which by uh, the way, this I don't know if you noticed. There's a group A. There's a group B. And then there's a group E. I, yeah. I don't know what happened to C and D, but not available at this point in time. So yeah, they they maybe they didn't even know who to put in C and D. They were like, ah, oh. we're just gonna jump straight to E. I don't know. But anyway, underpants. This is group B. Gnomes. Yeah, they were like, uh, step one, collect underpants. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, all right. Speaking of profiting, I hope you can do it on this one. This one is going to make you stop in your tracks because I'm going to take Zane Smith, the truck series champion over Ross Chastain in this race. But you say it's Ross Chastain, Rod. Yeah, I know. But it's also the truck series champion, Zane Smith. Uh, unfortunately, he did not have a good outing uh, last year because he was disqualified. So he did finish dead last uh, under disqualification. Yeah, he struggled in 2021, but before that, he had a sixth place finish in 2021 in the spring, a seventh place finish in 2020, and a sixth place finish in 2020 in the spring as well. Ah, uh, the grass Chastain's run well here. I mean, uh, in 2020, he finished 14th. In 2019, he finished second. Uh, in 2019, he finished 10th. In 2018, he finished seventh. And then, of course, he had a 14th and a 25th uh, place finish in 2020 or 2013. So what's making me pick Zane Smith? Well, I mean, the simple fact of the matter is that he is the regular here. And I know Ross Chastain loves to race. I know that he will get behind anything. He's of the Kyle Larson elk. But um, again, we've seen it even with Kyle Busch that these trucks or these cup series guys don't always necessarily come down and completely dominate the truck series. I mean, Kyle Busch does. And let's just put it that way. He, He'll spank the field, but uh, yeah, it's not it's not, yeah. been, not been so much of that lately. Not lately, and that's what I'm saying. These these truck series guys are very they're getting very protective of their series, and they're starting to put up fights on their own turf. So I think Zane Smith, as returning champ, has a lot to prove to these Cup guys, and I think he's going to go out and run a, a hell of a race. And I think at the very least he'll finish over Chastain. Maybe Chastain tries to get a little too aggressive and somebody slams the door on him and, and ends his day. So um, we'll see how that shakes out. But I still think Zane Smith at minus 135 can finish over Ross Chastain. Again, probably a little more juice than we like to give out on the show, but um, I, I still think this is a winning bet. Only pay the juice if you lose, Rod. Indeed.
Uh, I'm actually going to make a case for both of these guys. So I don't think it's bad to take the Zane Smith side of this head to head. I do like both these guys this week. My next bet, Zane Smith, the top five at minus 115, might be my favorite bet on the board. You're not paying much for juice at only minus 115. It's not the top three where it might be a little tougher to squeeze into. All he has to do is finish in the top five. He's the best truck series driver in the field. That's not, I don't think there's any question. He's finished top two in the points three or four seasons in a row now. He's a defending series champion, one of the best drivers out there. Yes, you throw in Chastain. Yes, you throw in Kyle Busch. Yes, you throw in John Hunter. That's three other guys that are going to be up there and be very good. But Zane Smith is going to be able to hang with those guys. He could easily beat any and all of them. My wish is to win odds were just a little bit better. He is the second favorite to, um, so it's, uh, well, I had it in front of me and I lost it. But it is uh, Kyle Busch is the favorite to win at plus 125. And then Zane Smith at plus 450. But Smith for this top five, I absolutely love. The books obviously think he's the second favorite to win the race. That easily puts him in the top five. Uh, again, disqualification last year. I don't remember where he actually finished the race. Uh, we'd have to go back and, and dig that up. But it doesn't matter because he was disqualified anyways. But Zane Smith top five. I mean, he's, again, one of those guys. We talk about these guys in all these series, right? It's Kevin Harvick in the Cup Series. It's Riley Herbst in the Xfinity Series. It's Zane Smith in the truck series. Going to be there each and every week. Uh, so love me some Zane Smith for a top five at minus 115. I absolutely love me some Zane Smith. Uh, again, like I said, just just basically because uh, he is the defending champ, I, I feel like he's got a lot to prove and he's going to prove uh, something. So I, I, I'm with you on that one. There's one that I like that's very interesting, and uh, I'm going to take it. And I feel like I know at minus 170, once again, it is not sexy. I'm not dishing out the sexy bets today. I'm sorry. Like, I feel like I'm just trying to give you winners, and they don't all have to be sexy. Uh, just, just just winners. Real quick, too. Zane Smith did finish second in this race last season before he was disqualified. So, see, he had the speed to get there. He just got disqualified. Uh, maybe that's extra one. piece of tape or something. Who knows? Yeah, right. What what are those? The tape <laughs> underneath the the wrap? What? I don't know what those things are. Uh, all right, but yeah, I'm gonna take. Uh, it's it, there's the bet out there. It's Kyle Busch versus the field. Kyle Busch is at plus one forty. The field is at minus one seventy. This is but an F one bet. <laughs> this is a total F one bet, which is why I had to give it out today. Uh, because we talked about it, and we're gonna talk about it coming up when we when we talk about the winners. But you know. It's just the field is everybody else and everybody else has been able to beat Kyle Busch over the last couple of seasons. So I, I think there's a very real possibility it happens again. Kyle Busch is on fire now in the cup series, but he's not in his own equipment anymore. He's not in that KBM uh, stuff. Well, it's, it's still his equipment. It's just, yeah, it's it, it is. Now yeah but it's Chevy and it's, it's not, it's a whole new situation for him. So, you know, I, I think that the field has a good shot of, of catching him again um, because, like I said, it's it's just it's not the same situation, right? It's it's one thing to go from from Gibbs to Childress, right? I mean, that's still that's still you, you know, that's still whatever. But I, I just don't know that that garage is set yet. So I think um, in the truck series, at least, I think it's going to take a little more for him to get used to it. Yeah, I mean, if you go back and you place this bet the last two seasons, right? While Kyle Busch was in this race. You would have won it both seasons. So, and there's just there's so much that can happen. He's at plus one twenty five. We're not going to make the case to take him at plus one twenty five. Does he come out lead every single lap of this race, lap the field by forty seven laps, and win the race? Will anybody be surprised? No, we won't because it's Kyle Busch. It's a truck series. He's got sixty some wins, eighty some wins in that series. Something ridiculous. But hasn't done it the last two seasons. Something about Las Vegas, it's, be, it's his home track, and it's not always done him the best. It's He's kind of struggled there, obviously, with the last couple of seasons in the truck series. We'll see. This is a new Kyle Busch, right? Things are a little different. But like you said, KBM was the premier truck series team. He had the best team. He had the best drivers, the best trucks, the best cars, everything. Now the funding is much different. It's not the same as it was with Toyota. They've switched over to Chevy. The driver lineup is not there. We don't ever talk about KBM drivers 
other than when Kyle Busch is in. I don't. I, I'm not even sure who the other KBM drivers are, honestly. <laughs> I I would have to actually look it up to be reminded of which ones are the KBM drivers because they're just that irrelevant at this point. And so, if you give Kyle Busch a crappy truck and put him out there, can he do good in it? Yes, he can. But with these other people in the field, guys like John Ernemacek that have beaten him here before, Zane Smith, you got Ross Chastain. There's just so much out there, and that's not accounting for. Somebody spins him out, he blows a tire, he has engine problems, he gets a pit road speeding penalty, which he gets a lot, by the way. Uh, any number of things. I wish maybe it wasn't quite 170, but you're getting 35 other trucks against him. Yes, not all 35 can beat him, although they could if he has any type of problem. So you only need one of them to beat him. So I think that it's it's a fairly safe bet to make. Nothing is safe with against Kyle Busch, of course, but safe enough. So Kyle Purdy, or I'm sorry, Chase Purdy Chase in the four car yeah. is the other Kyle Busch uh, car or truck out there other than Kyle what are, Busch. What are Chase Purdy's odds to win this race, Rod? Let me scroll. Let me scroll. 75 to 1. Sounds like it should be a solid team. Yeah. Yeah. 75 to 1. And that's Tanner it. Gray, 75 to 1 too. What the heck? He's the only he's the only Kyle Bush driver that's listed that's not Kyle Bush. That's that's Chase Purdy. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. So uh all right. Speaking of winners, we'll give you those winners. We're gonna step away for a break, and when we come back, we'll set up our winners for this race. But before we do, let's tell you about underdog fantasy. Because we're also brought to you by underdog fantasy. Underdog is your home for offseason NFL best ball drafts, but they also got you covered for a ton of other daily games, including NBA, NHL, and PGA. Underdog Fantasy is a great way to get down on your favorite player props if they're not available in your state. Head over to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code SGPN for a 100% deposit bonus. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. So someone's got to win this race, Cody, and we think we've got a handle on who that very well could be. I, and I see you continue to just start writing stuff down. Look at you. You're, you're well, I said earlier I didn't have a long shot. Then I was looking at the long shot odds. I talked myself very quickly into a long shot. Uh, you can't blame me for that, Rob. No, I can't. I never will. I'm also still price shopping. I've had an eventful night. Uh, yeah, long <laughs> story, but. ER trip and all kinds of fun stuff. Everybody's okay. Everything's good, but uh, I'm still price shopping. I found a better line. So I'm going to take Ross Chastain seven to one to win this race plus 700. Uh, it's Ross Chastain. I don't really know that uh, I need to make much more of an argument than that. Uh, he's going to be in a nice truck. Um, we've seen him have up and down performances in these trucks, but he's had success before he won at Charlotte last season. That's a very comparable track, same size, everything in the same exact truck. Uh, finished 12th at Texas. That'd be the other comparable race that he drove. Not That's not the best day, but uh, he led 46 laps at Darlington before he had an issue. So these trucks aren't bad trucks in any way, shape, or form. And it's Ross Chastain. We all know what he can do. Uh, we've seen him do it before. So with Kyle Busch, I mean, I'd love to give you Kyle Busch. Yeah, but a plus 125, plus 150. There's just, it's not enough value there for three seasons ago. I would have done this because it was five races in the truck series. He would win all five. It was five races in the Xfinity series. He would win all five. There might be, I think he's racing a road course this season. That might be a place where we would lay something like this a little more likely to anyways. Um, but I can't, I, I'm surprised he's not at minus odds. So that's a bonus if you want to bet him. But with the unknowns about what that truck is even going to be, I, I can't do it. Um, and so so skipping over him. And Ross Chastain, again, he's he's got the talent. He's going to be in a good enough truck. He can get it done. So 7-1, to one, he's my top guy. Um, originally, like I said, I was looking down at, at Ben Rhodes down there. Couldn't talk myself into it. So I slid back up a little bit. Corey Heim is at 10-1. to one. To win this race at plus a thousand um i already made the case for him earlier to have a good finish over grant and finger uh i think that Corey heim is a guy that can get it done we saw it last season two wins 
again, he was in that Kyle Busch kind of all-star truck, but this Tricon team that he's at now should be what KVM was last season. That's what I'm expecting. So 10 to 1, I feel like Heim's a guy who can put himself in position. And if it came down to him racing against Kyle Busch, I think that he could at least put on a show and be there. I, I And we've seen it from guys like Chandler Smith. We've seen it from guys like John Harnemacek. Corey Heim is the next type of – the next Chandler Smith, the next John Harnemacek type of guy. Toyota's big on him. They're bringing him up. They've got a big bet on him. He's in a good truck. So I'm going to go with that. Then I'm going to go over to his teammate, Tanner Gray. Again, as I was scrolling through the long shot, 75 to 1, Rod. It's a long shot for a reason. I get it, but I already made the case for him to finish in the top five. Maybe all hell breaks loose. Maybe it's a chaotic day. Maybe it looks like Daytona on the Vegas Strip. I don't know, but I'm going to throw a little, just tiny little, little bit on Tanner Gray at 75 to 1 because that'd be quite a party if it cashed. And and he's in good enough truck that he could. Um, again, I, he's not necessarily the most talented driver. He's not a Corey Heim, but he can put himself in position. It's a good enough truck. If the right things happen around him, circumstance-wise in the race, he could win the race. At 75 to 1, it's worth a little sprinkle. Uh, we'll be we be throwing all that money down on the slot machines if he, uh, if he ends up hitting on that one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, oh, you're... Oh, you're oh. I'm sorry. I'm going to update that. Uh-oh. Tanner Gray, 100 to 1 to win the race. Ooh. Again, I'm shopping as we're on the show here. Uh, so, yes, 100 to 1 is the official Tanner Gray bet. Make sure you shop around, get the best line. Uh, let's go. Yes, please do. 100 to 1, much better than 75 to 1. That That's more of a party right there. That is what we're calling like walking around money around the, the win out there. That's, that's the good stuff. Um, all right, listen. So, my winners, I'm going to tell you this. This will be our Kyle Bush disclaimer, okay? Just like Cody said, he's at plus money, which means we're not telling you not to bet him. We are telling you, though, that the value is, eh. I mean, if it if it hits, you'll be happy because you win. But, I mean, again, it's just- And, again, you don't have to just follow our picks blindly or anything. That's not what we want. If you want to go in and just place a large chunk on Kyle Bush, go for it. We're not telling you not to do it. Just giving you the reasons that maybe the value isn't there. But, again, if he leads the entire race and wins, no surprise at all. No, no one, not a single soul will right, be put him in your go-kart behind the field, and he might still beat him. Eh, I mean, you know, you could put him in a Mario Kart at that point. And still <laughs> see. I mean, he'd be throwing, you know, red, what is it, the, the red turtle shells and knock everybody yeah. out? Yeah, there you um, go. But yeah, so anyways, we're not telling you not to bet Kyle Bush. I mean, I, I don't want to go down on record as having this, oh, those NASCAR gambling guys told me not to bet Kyle Bush. No, we just told you that the value is not exactly what we want. We want better value for Kyle Bush if we're going to bet him, especially because he hasn't won over the last couple of, of seasons and he's not in his premier equipment anymore. So anyways, with that said, John Hunter Nemechek was in his premier equipment last year. Uh, and did not actually have good finishes. He started on the pole both of the 2022 and the fall of, I'm sorry, the only race, oh, the fall race of 2021. He did start on the pole in both of those. Uh, Unfortunately, he finished 33rd and 25th in both of those races. Did not have stellar days. Didn't even finish the race there in uh, in 2021 in in the fall. Uh, But he did win after after starting third in the spring of 2021. So in this race, he won two seasons ago. So I really feel like John Hunter Nemechek, I wanted to not bet him at all. I wanted to stay away from him. I wanted to completely just say no. Uh, But, you know, he does have a win on this track recently. He was one of the only ones other than, uh, um, you know, Kyle Busch and and Chandler Smith to pick up a win. So I just, I feel like he's a good enough bet. He did win last week, albeit I still don't think uh, it was a valid win, but he did win. So I, I'm just saying, I, I want to invalidate invalidate that win. Uh, but at the same time, listen. I don't know I just, why, but it's hard for us to pick John Arnimacek. We don't. We're not. We're not huge fans. It's not even that he's a bad guy. He's no, really he's not. Great. He's a good guy. Like, I mean, his interview was was good. Like he was he was a, he's a good guy. I just I don't know what it is. I just don't. But anyways, he's a plus 800 to win this race. Uh, he is up around the, the top of the field as well uh, with Kyle Busch, with Ro- uh, Zane Smith, with Ross Chastain. Um, in fact, in some cases, he is the third or the fourth favorite to win this race. 
So it's not that much of a stretch to think that he could do it again. Um, I, I just, I, I feel like this is a John Hunter. I feel like me, my bias, I have to kick my bias aside and, and suggest John Hunter. Well, that's I- the thing is if, if we are picking him, that shows you how much we really think he's going to be good here. And he's got the momentum coming off the win last week. Yeah. And if, if we're picking him, <laughs> there's a good reason behind it. Cause he's not a guy that we're just picking cause we love him so much or whatever. <laughs> Oh man, don't make me start the John Hunt Janimacek fan club. I'm not necessarily ready for all that yet, but I will say that I'm I'm man enough to know when uh, it's okay to pick somebody um, against my better judgment. So, speaking of picking somebody against my better judgment, this guy I didn't I, again I, looking for long shots like Cody does, and I don't normally pick long shots, but I saw Matt Crafton at forty to one, and and he has not won a race in this on this track in twenty six starts. But he does have 17 top 10 finishes, 11 top five finishes. He has got a string right now of five top 10 finishes, which three of those uh, were top five finishes, uh, top 10 finishes, top five finishes. Yes. So a string of five top 10 finishes. It's a lot of numbers. And three of those are top five finishes. So the guy has been runner up here twice in 2011 and 2012. And then again uh, in, tw- in 2009. So it's got a nose for the front. Like this guy's been around the front so many times and we've seen it so many times. It's even this season where a guy's going to punch through for a, a big win. Right. And I don't know what it is about. I just felt this urge to say, you know, I think Matt Crafton at 40 to one is actually pretty decent value for him to punch through in a, in an opportunity to, to get there. Finally, finally punch through for his first win. It's a season, it's a year, it's a whatever a first, I guess, for me. It's a NASCAR 75th, right? So, I don't know. This one's this one's got, like, a lot of heart with the numbers behind it that make me say, at 40 to 1, I'm willing to take a stab at this. Yeah, it's also Matt Crafton's 75th year in the truck series. <laughs> Not actually, but 23rd, It's he's been in the series for a long time. Uh, last time he was in a win slump. He busted it at Kansas, a very, very similar track to this one. Uh, he's never a bad bet. In my 40 to 1, that's great odds. Again, a guy that's going to be up there in the mix all day. If the cards fall right, right, maybe he's going to need a little bit of help, yes. But he gets that help. He can do it. He's in a Thor Sport truck, which he's been in forever. But he's a three-time series champion. He can still get it done, put himself in position to get the win. So he's never a bad long shot. And, and Getting him at this this grade of odds, it's his days of winning aren't necessarily over. He can he can still jump up and grab one, um, and this could be the week we see it. I don't want to call anybody past their prime because that means I'm past my prime. So I'm I'm not willing to admit anybody else is past their prime because that makes me uh, I'm much older than a lot of these guys on the circuit. So uh, in fact, I'm I'm I could be the father of many of those. Hold on, let's check the DNA. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> not that popular. Uh, all right. So anyways, let's uh, let's go over the bets real quick before I totally alienate myself from the rest of the audience. Uh, Cody started you out with John Hunter Nemechek over Ty Majeski at minus 125. I gave you Scott Stewart Friesen at a <laughs> top five truck at plus 250. Cody gave you Corey Heim over Grant Enfinger at minus 135. And I said Enfinger was going to win Group E, which includes Corey Heim, among others, uh, in, including, let me click that, Ty Majeski and Ben Rhodes. Uh, and then Cody gave you Tanner Gray as a top five truck at plus 650. I said Christian Eckes was going to finish over Ben Rhodes at minus 120. And then uh, Cody gave you Raja Karuth as the winner of Group B. Uh, which has a stellar list of fantastic names, including Haley Deegan, Dean Thomas, Brett Holmes, Jake Garcia, and Daniel Dye. Uh, Go Google some of those. And then I said Zane Smith was going to finish over the Watermelon Man himself, Ross Chastain, at minus 135. And then uh, Cody gave you Zane Smith as a top five truck, and he continues to change his odds at minus 115. I said that the field would win over Kyle Busch at minus 170. And Cody listed off all of his winners to include Ross Chastain at seven to one, Corey Heim at 10 to one, Tanner Gray at a 100 to one, 
And I said, John Hunter Nemechek at eight to one is intriguing, as is Matt Crafton at 40 to one to take home the checkered flag from the Victoria's Voice Foundation 200 from the Las Vegas Motor Speedway this Friday night for the Craftsman truck. <laughs> Almost a camping <laughs> that was almost a false start there, but Ooh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. The one, one more fun statistic, too, to back up the John Hunter Nemechek. The Corey Heim, the Tanner Gray picks seven truck series races in a row at Las Vegas Motor Speedway have been won by Toyota trucks. Yep, absolutely. I, I forgot to make that point when I was talking about. I meant uh, to make that point, too, but I, yeah. I forgot I had it written down over here and I saw it later. So I got so excited. <laughs> you get it now. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Yeah. All these Toyotas winning up at Las Vegas. I think that trend uh, continues, except for maybe Matt Craft and punching through in his Ford to uh to get through so we will see how that all shakes out on friday but that means that tomorrow cody is going to be our xfinity day to talk about the xfinity race from las vegas super exciting stuff um and i'm ready for it man let's go i'm pumped i uh haven't even looked at odds honestly i've been busy tonight kyle bush though plus 200 be getting into the territory where we could talk me into laying a plus 200 on kyle bush so let's come back tomorrow to find out for sure i've got to dig into these and and uh cole custer the third wow wow i'm i'm claiming custer right now rob all right you fine you can't take him from me this week you start the dock this week and throw it in there early right? six to one go ahead and place those bets now before they drop all right your teaser. come back come back for tomorrow for the rest of them <laughs> come back for all of those all right well since you're probably going to end up tweeting it out tomorrow why don't you let everybody know they can find you on social media so they can find it exactly follow me on twitter at husker underscore zeeb and follow the show as well at nascar gambling indeed get in on the twitter I, I had to get you one more shot in there guys uh get in on the twitter get in on the discord rather sg.pn slash discord find us all in there that conversation is going man i like i'll literally wake up in the morning and I'm on the West Coast, so I'm already like three hours yep. behind a lot of people. <laughs> Got to scroll gotta... all the way back up to read all the messages. Yeah, I'm Good talking time. like this is my sitting in the DMV getting caught up type stuff. So <laughs> uh, get in that Discord. Have some fun with us. Follow me on Twitter at RJ Gomez. Link in the bio to everything we got going on, whether it is here, whether it's Sportsbook Review, whether it is in between media, back roads on Thursday night. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for doing so. Growing the channel out so, you know, again, numbers are thin now, but that's not going to stay the same. Smash that subscribe button is what the kids say nowadays and do all that stuff that you got to do to keep us rising. Bell for those those live shows, uh, potentially maybe even later this week. So Indeed, we'll get there. Getting you drunk, guys. I promise you. Uh, All right, Xfinity tomorrow. We'll see you then. Until that, let's go racing and let it ride. Lying and